And feel free to ask any questions that you may have. I know you've been studying your Hebrew. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at it. Uh, resume this share. All right. So I want to send this lesson to you. It's lesson number four. Again, you know, it's always going to the vocabulary words that are being used are used in the actual lesson. And it's building upon everything you've learned all the way up from lesson number one, two, and three. Okay. Last week we talked about, I think, rules uh, seven, eight, and nine. So today we're going to be talking about 10. Okay. Um, do you remember my secret that I told you about how to memorize these words? Like the, um, like for example, Lashon and, and ear and eye and heart. What I generally do is I would go over here first and I would block out the other words. And I would just look at this and just practice the word like Lashon, Ozen, Ayin, Lev, Lavav, Rosh, and Ragel. And then I would, uh, you know, come back over and I would cover that up. And then I would go, you know, I look at it. And when I say, you know, Lashon, I know that's what I'm talking about. Or, or when you talk about tongue, it's a language. So I got Lashon, Lashon, and then Ozen, and then Ayin, and then Lev, and the Lavav. And I would go up. On the from the bottom, and go lavav or leven, and ayin, and then um, ozen, aloshon, loshon, aloshon, uh, ozen, ayin, lev. Right. So you just do it that way. Put it, some music to it. Put a song to it. It'd be it'd be great for you. So in these um, vocabulary words today, what you have is how to say parts of your body, like your eye, your ear, your heart, your rosh, your ragel, your foot, your hand, yad, and then the mountain har and then torah and then am is nation and then yaled and pethak all there okay make a song out of it real cool real easy so today in rule number 10 what we're going to be dealing with is the noun endings okay and so um the example that they're going to use is the noun horse and in english we would want to say that the horse belongs to someone we would simply add the title uh, of the person who owns the horse in front of the word and here's the example it says my horse Right, I mean, the horse belongs to me, your horse, the horse belongs to you, and our horse, the horse belongs to us. Okay, so gives us what it is in Hebrew. We want to say my horse, your horse, or our horse. Instead of adding a word to saying my or your or our, what they what they're using is they're using a letter or letters um, onto the end of that noun. So what it does is it minimizes what a person has to say. OK, but within that word, you know, the root of the word or the vocabulary word, all they're doing is just going to add this ending. So you got these endings here that they're adding the ka, the new. OK, so they're going to add these endings. So we would say, here's the horse, a sus. We know it's a male horse. And if I want to say it's my horse, the my again is this yo with this uh, little dot here in the yod right here. OK, so it'll be su uh, susi. OK. Susi, sus, or su, and then si. Susi. Yeah, susi. Okay, we would usually say S-E-E, -E, but remember, we both know that this now is really like the I as in I, 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 as in it, or fit, or pit, or kit. Okay, so it's the I sound. So sis, susi, susi. Like you're going to say susit, you should say susi without putting a t on the end. So it's susi. So susi or sus, uh, sus, susika. Okay. Susika. Susika. The ka on the end is your. And that's in the second person. So here we have my, which is first person. We have the um, your, which is the second person. Okay. And then you have our, right? Which is first person uh, plural. Okay. Common. Okay. So you're always going to have first person, second person, third person, first person, common, singular, then you have first person, common, plural. Okay. Very simple. So you're just adding letters and words to, to it. The next page, what they have here is they're going to tell us about all the endings all the noun endings and they're never going to change this is what what it is 
Okay. So my is I, ka, ka. If you notice, again, they're telling you masculine singular, mask, uh, female singular, your, your, ka, you know, and then here, final cough with the two dots. Okay. That's the feminine. Okay. So What's the to... difference between, I'm, I'm looking for the difference between the your masculine and the feminine. Um, Is it just the placement of the dots? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the, uh, it's the placement of the dots. So for example, this is feminine, right? So they usually put those two dots right there on right next to here. Okay. Here they use this, the, the kamats, they put that right there to let you know that's masculine. Um, but, and it also has two different sounds. Like if I say, um, uh, uh, let's just use them. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Um, shimka. Okay, if I say shimka, then I'm saying that I'm talking about a, ma a masculine's name because shame is name or shim, right? And then I would say here, it wouldn't be shimka. It is to be, sh um, it'd go shimak. So for the feminine endings, they usually just are just, there's no ah on the end of this, on, on this in particular one, right? Um, it's just something you got to get used to, but that's a great question. But anytime you see that this on the end of a, of a final cough, that right there is a masculine. That's the masculinity. And then the two dots right here are the femininity. Okay. And then over here, we have the, um, you can see the wa that has a dot over, and that means his or its. Okay. Because his can be a person. And then if it's a it, it's is still a masculine it, which could be a horse or a bull or a bird. You know what I mean? It could be any masculine masculinity of anything. Okay. So, uh, and also too, when it deals with the Shabbat, it calls it uh, like a it, but what is a masculine now? You know, he said, I've set him apart or it apart as holy. So you're always going to have this idea of masculinity and femininity. You're always going to have the idea of singular and plural. Okay. So when we talk about, and these are noun endings. Okay. That deal with something that belongs, something possessive, what belongs to you. Okay. Um, for example, you know, Shemo, you know, well, we know the Shem is name. And then that O right here. Is represents this is his. So if you want to say his name, you would say Shemo. If you want to say her name, what would I say? Shema. Shema. Yeah. Okay. So Shem is his name. And then if I say his name, I would say Shemo. And that's how I'm, I'm transliterating it out right now. Okay. If I wanted to say, um, our name. Shem what? No. There you go. Shimnu. Good. So Shemo, Shimnu, Shema. Okay. If I say your name, your, your name and the second person singular and one of these up here. I would say for a male, I would say what? Say that again. Say, for example, I'm asking what is a, a man, his name, if his name, if I, the name is Shane, right? So Shem, mm -hmm. then I would ask the man, I would put this on the end, which would be Shem what? Shemka. Shemka. Okay. Shemka. Okay. Female. I don't know what the vowel pointing is on it, but I think it would be uh, uh, Shemek. Uh, That's what it would probably be, Shemek. Okay. It would be Shemek. They change the vowels when you're dealing with a female. Okay. So we'll get into the 
dots and all that kind of stuff and what they mean when you talk about vowel pointing later. All I want you to know is that in order to use these words, all you got to do is, is remember what the letter is and whether it's feminine or masculine. That's it. So you're going to get this list. Okay. If I'm talking about plurality of yours, see, there's two yours. There's the one your here, this masculine, the your, this feminine, and then that's singular, but here's plural. And what they've done is they changed the form. So here's the form of the cough. The final cough is the one that you have up here. So, you know, often we get confused because we're like, well, these look totally different than each other, but they're exactly the same. The sound is still exactly the same, but when you do plural, you're going to put a, a, another letter on the end, which of course, if it's masculine, it's going to be the mem. If it's feminine, it's going to be the noon, the final noon, the final mem. Those are final mems. Those are finals. This one here is final because it's the last letter. Final because it's the last letter. Okay. And so when they add the masculinity, or excuse me, they ask the masculinity to plurality, they'll put that mem on the end. Okay. So if I say that, if I say um, your names, and I'm talking in plural, and names is what? Shim. Then I would say your names. I would put that on there and it'd be Kim. Shim Kim. Okay. Shim Kim. Okay. If it was female, it would be Shim, uh, Shim Ken. Okay. So once you identify and you know what the letters are, you know, that's the Shin and there's the Mim. And then you got the cat and then the Mim. You would already automatically know as soon as you see that, oh, that's masculine. Oh, that's you, your. Oh, it's possessive. Oh, and this is shame. So that's name. Oh, okay. So in your mind, what's going to happen is your brain is going to start looking at these letters and these are your pieces to your puzzle. These are your pieces to your puzzle. And all you're doing is remembering what these pieces are. New is always our, like L-O, hey, new. That's our Elohim. Elo, hey, Kim. All they do is just switch this out and they put the Kim in there. Okay. Elo, hey, ka. All they do is they just switch it out. There's Elo, hey, and then they put the, the ka on there. Elo, hey, ka. Okay. I'm just writing it out in English. I don't know if, you know, that's the proper transliteration. Um, Elo, hey, Kim. Your plural. Elohe Ken. Okay. His Elohim will be Elo Eloho. Okay. Or Aleha. Okay. For hers. And if it's my, it'd be Eli. My L. L is right here. And then this right here. That would be my L, my L. And one of the, this is one of the names of Eli, and then they got a Yahoo. So really was Eli Yahoo, they would call Elijah. But his name is Eli, and it's now no J, is Yahoo. Eli Yahoo, and Eli Yahoo's name is what it really is, which means my, Yahweh is my L, he's my power. Okay, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Elohe, what? Elohe Nu. Elohe Nu. He's our. You should love your, okay, Lavavka, you know, get the Ka here. Lavavka. See, you got to be listening. You know, Shimka or Nefeshka. Okay. And so when they say, uh, you know, Lavavka and Nefeshka and Demeodaka, we know that he's talking to the individual, the single person. Even though the Shema is to the whole entire nation, Shema means listen. When he tells them to listen and obey Israel, then he tells them how you are supposed to do it individually. And so that's why it's important to know the language, because you'll know, oh, he's not talking to everybody here. He's more directing his conversation towards me. Okay. So it tells us to learn that table very well. I'm going to send this to you. 
if I haven't already. <laughs> I think I did. Vocabulary Bane. And so you see that it goes through a, uh, anytime you're adding a letter to uh, or ending, anytime you add an ending to a very regular word like Bane, the vowels are going to change. Okay, so we'll get into that later. All I want you to see is that this bet is the same as this bet. The noon goes from a final and then it goes back to its regular form and then you just put the yod on the end. That's it. And it means what? My son. As soon as you see this, you already know what it is. You'll be like, oh, that's my. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll see this. Sometimes you'll see two dots in a yod, which we know that's a semicolon. We know this right here means um, plurality of my. So there's all different types of yodes and dots that you're going to learn. But what we're trying to learn today is, is that you're just going to add your pieces of your puzzle to the end of the vocabulary words that you learn. There you go. There's a horse. And all they're doing is, is just adding that little ka. And we know what that ka is. It is your horse and it's a masculine because it has this mark right here. We know it's singular because it's by itself. There's not an additional letter on the end. Okay. So you know how to read, you will be all. Oh, that's sus and then sa and then ka. Susaka. Okay. Not suska. It's susaka. Okay? Susaka. Susaka. And the more you read, and you'll remember it. Okay. Here, the third one is your foot, your regel, right? So it says your foot. Now, let me ask you a question. Well, it already has the answer up here. It's fit feminine. Why? Because it has these two dots right here. We know it's your singular that has that final cough right there. Okay. So they changed the vowels from regel to Rog lake. Rog lake. Rog lake. Remember, I told you the sounds would be different. If it was a masculine, it'd be probably rog and then uh, laka. Like rog laka, hers is raw lake. Okay. Rog lake. Yeah, rog lake. Uh huh. Okay. See, and that's it, Rog Lake. So what is it? We're just taking pieces of your puzzle and putting it together. Once you know what the vocabulary word, how to say mother, it's aim in written form, and then you put the O. Well, we know it's his because it has this right here, the Wa with the dot on top, okay? And then when you put it together, these two dots change and it becomes MO. The dot that's in the center right here means that I got to make two, two M's. So the first one is M. Since it has a dot in, I'm going to make another M and then I'm going to put the O right here. MO. And that's how you say it, MO. So the way that I find for it to be is like, don't worry, just if you know how to read, you'll read it like this. You say a mother's aim, and you got to remember that. You so you wouldn't say amo because you're changing this to adding this letter to the end. This is going to automatically change, and that's when we get to why and how, and that's more intricate, that's more detailed. So there's se several layers that you're going to have to learn, right? So don't try to worry about well, why did it just change here? What we want to look for is to say, is this letter the same as this letter? Is it the same? No, one's final. Good. Is the sound the same? Except for you have to double it up. Yes, yes. So the dot in the middle of this means to make it's called a geminate. It's called a twin. That's all you got to remember. You got to make a hard, a hard sound or a double sound. And that's more of the, the grammar and the, the, the gosh and all that kind of stuff. You'll get to that. But I'm glad you picked that up. Then as soon as you change something, you added this letter right here to the end. This letter goes from a final because it's no longer a final and it transitions over into a, a regular mem. And that's where you got MO. 
that means his mother. So what we're going to be looking for after we hear a sound like avo. So I'll say av. What's your av? Father. Father. If I want to say his father, I would say what? Avo. Avo. So what we're looking for, you guys, is we're looking to know our vocabulary, and then we're going to be looking for our endings. That's all. And the way that you'll get better at this is when you read it. The more you read it, the better off it's going to be. Because you're going to be like, okay, I know what that is. I know what that ending is. Okay. Here it is again. Here's one of vocabulary words, Lashon. For the tongue or a language, Lashon, like Lashon HaKodesh, that means the holy language, okay? So the Lashon, if I want to say her her tongue or her language, what would I say? Lashona. There you go. It's Lashona. Now, you're going to see the endings here with this dot right here. We don't have, and so the rule is, I know I told you about the mem just a few moments ago with that. Since that mem was in, it was like the second letter. Here's another letter right here. And then here was another letter right here. So this is the first, this is the second, and then here's the third. What I'm going to show you is that all because a dot is in the middle of something doesn't mean that you got to double it. All because you see, once you learn the rules, you'll get there. But I have to tell you what this dot is here. Because at our first lesson, you learn that if you want to feminize something, you just put this on it. Which is the ah, right? And here we have where you have the dot in the center of it. You still know it's her because of the, you know, this mark here and then this letter. But what does this dot here mean? Where is that dot there? I'm going to tell you what that dot means. That dot means possessive. Okay. It means it belongs to her. It's hers. Okay. So if you just had... Um, uh, Amara, which is uh, you had Am um, Amara. Amara means to, uh, she she said. Okay, so you don't have a dot in here because you don't have to make that possessive. But when you're talking about a, a noun and saying that something belongs to a female, you're going to have a the hay on it with this mark here with a dot in the inside of the hay. That's all you got to remember. And it, don't worry. If you forget, it'll come back to you because you're going to see it. When you talk about her land or Yah's talking about Jerusalem or a city or whatever, and you'll see this on the end of it, you'll be like, oh, it's meaning her, her land or hers. Okay. So Lashona is saying that that is her tongue. And we know that that's in the third person. And we know that it's what? Singular. Feminine singular, third person, FS. That's what it is. So you're getting vocabulary. You know what the tongue is now. You know what the language is. And now how you, you know how to say her tongue, Lashona. If I was going to say a male, what would I say about his tongue? Uh, Lashonu. There you go. All I want you to remember the sound. So Lashon right here, we would, of course, get rid of this and turn it into this down here. This wouldn't be here because we're not talking about her. We're talking about him. So if we talked about him, we automatically know since we've been studying that this letter on the end would be uh, Lashono. So Lashona is her tongue. His tongue is Lashono. Okay, so the O on the end, Lashono. So it's just taking the pieces. If I would say your tongue, say I said your tongue. And you got to ask yourself, what kind of your? Is it a first person or a second person your? Or is it a singular or is it a second person uh, plural? And is it masculine or feminine? So those are the questions you'd have to ask. And so your brain is not used to asking those questions because when we hear your or you, we automatically think that this means individual. Mm -hmm. So we're not accustomed to saying, well, are you talking to a group of people or are you talking to masculine? Are you talking? We haven't been taught. That's the danger of the language that we've been taught. They don't really get into details. It's not very concrete. 
Hebrew language is very concrete. Okay. So you got your, you know what your pieces are to your puzzle and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, and then of course, uh, we got Emma Lashona. And then the last one, of course, is our, our son. Again, they're just using the regular noun, Bain, and then they put the, the new on it. So it's Benenu. Okay. So I know these vowels have changed, the vowel points have changed. They look completely different than this. And I know, okay. But we know in the end right here, the was dot from his or him has now moved to the side. Okay. And we know that the noon here means us or our. Okay. Our son. So Benenu, that's our son. I'm going to write some stuff up here right quick. I'm going to get rid of this so you won't get confused. And I don't want you to worry about the, um, the vowel points. Forget about that. Just look at the word, okay? And I'm going to change this to a um, – I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it where it is. It's not that it, it doesn't need to be changed. You know it's going to be changed. If I said – if I put this on there, and this is not, of course, the right vowel points, what did I just say? Because there's two of them. There's one that has this, and there's one that has this. One is a masculine, and the other one is a feminine. Okay? And I'm talking about your, and I'm talking about a singular. Okay? So right here, I just said your son, and I'm talking to a male. Okay. If I said, and I had this right here into two dots, and of course this would be changed. I'm talking to what? Masculine or feminine? Feminine. Thank you, because you can remember this. That's all you got to remember. If you remember the, how the pieces go, you're fine. If I said that um, I put a, a here like that, and we made this like that, what I what I just say? Is it his son? Yes, it is. Okay. So there's different. So all you got to do is learn your endings. And once you put your endings on, you'll be fine. Okay. So I don't want you to get discouraged if you say, well, I don't know how to read that because it just changed from Bain to Baino uh, to, to Baino or Benka or whatever. It's going to change. Let's break it down. So there are two rules that we have to know in regard to adding on the noun endings. There's two. And often when we're learning, no one ever taught us the rules. We got That's what we're learning. You're learning rules. That's all. You can learn the language, but if you don't know the rules, then you don't know the game, right? It's like if you don't know how to play pool, you can hit the balls in the corner all day long. But if you don't know the rules, you really don't know how to play. So that's what this cl these classes are. And, and they're not, and listen, they're not even that, they're not advanced. They're just simple, very simple stuff, okay? But we, we have to know the rules. That's why they call it rule number 10. So before we can add a noun ending, because that's what we're discussing right now, before you can add any of those endings, okay, the noun endings, which is the ka or the masculine O or the A or whatever to a noun, we first have to put the noun into its misimikuth form, okay? And of course, the simikuth form means that, and they tell us what it is. They said if a noun ends in A on here, if it's feminine, it needs to change to a tav. We've already went over that last week, okay? If it ends in an em, it has to drop the mem off, get rid of that, and you go get the yo with the two dots. See, they didn't tell us, they didn't put the two dots on there, but the, we should know this. So anytime you're adding to a, any noun, if it is in plural as masculine or if it's in a singular feminine, you got to change those letters. That rule still applies, okay? Um, with all other nouns, the letters don't change. I told you a couple of weeks ago that I didn't really know what this meant because I didn't. I said, well, it is what it is. 
But after looking at um, was in Kodeshimu's uh, Akarith Hamoyit or Akarith Hamoyit, um, after death, that was our Torah portion for last week. I found out what a, um, a what they call a simka is, a simika. Here they call it a simikuth because you're doing more of that, right? So the simika means that they had the two goats. And one was for the offerings, I mean, for the sin offering. And what simika is, is to put your hands on the head of an animal. You're going to, okay, you're going to let one go and you're going to keep the other. So with that same idea and concept, they got, they're using the word of semikuth because it comes from this idea of putting your hands on two things. And then one of them is going to change. <laughs> one's going to be kept, one's going to be sent away. But remember, the study we did last week, the two goats were the same. They had to be identical, right? So in this case, when you change the word banim, okay, which is to say banim. Well, we know bane is son, and then when a in is sons, masculinity, right? So, but what's exactly the same as benim is equivalent to bene. They're exactly the same. They're exactly the same. One just looks this way and the other one looks this way. All I did was take the mem off and, and put the two dots. They're still the same. And that's what the semika is. The semika is one of one put placing their hands on something and converting it, but yet it doesn't change except for in the sense that one, it's going to change, but the meaning and the de definition of it doesn't change. They get this word too because when Moshe died, he called Yoshua and told him to come unto him, and he put his hands on him, and he laid his hands on him, and he conferred his leadership power to him. And they're saying every time that happened, every time there was some, some power being transferred over, it's still the same power. It just might change to a different person. Okay. So without being too confusing, they're using this term semika because you're saying you're they're changing something. It's a change that's happening, but it still means the same. All because I took the ah off the end of the word doesn't mean that it's no longer feminine. It just converted over to this, to this letter. All because I take the em off of, you know, the yod and the mem off, doesn't mean when it's by itself with the two dots that it's still not plural. This is plural and this is plural. This is feminine singular. This is feminine singular. See, so nothing's changed. Even though I put my hands on it and it's changed in a sense of, of its presentation in its form or its letter, the actual meaning behind it never changes. So that's why you got to remember semi kuf because all it means is something's just changing, but it doesn't change its foundational meaning. And here's the case of point. So let's see some examples about what I'm saying. The first one is my wife. Wife is Isha. Okay, Isha. Isha. I, 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 like an it. Isha. Okay. As soon as we, we know that Isha has the what? It has the ah on the end. It has ah on the end. Isha. Right? So uh -huh. now that I have to, if I'm going to put it in a sentence, Next to another noun, I have to change it. If I'm going to add a letter to the end of this to be my wife, it's going to go through some changes. Okay. So first I saw, oh, okay. I looked at this word Isha. Okay. It's Isha. Okay. And now what it got, oh, it got to be changed because I got to put it in this form now. So I'm going to put my hands on it. Now that I put my hands on it, is it still my, is it still wife? Yes, it's still wife even though it has a top right there. Okay, so now I want to add this piece to the puzzle, my wife. So how do I say my? Oh, it's it right here. So I'm going to add the it to the ishaith, and then we got this, ishti. <laughs> you see? So it went from isha, it went from isha 
to Isheth. Why am I writing that so many times? And then it went from Isheth to Ish T. See? So depending on where it's at, if it's the first letter of next to the, you know, another noun, they got to change it. If I'm going to add something, a letter to it, I got to change it. Yes. A co T. I can't hear you. Oh, can you, you hear me now? I hear you a little bit better. Yes. Um, why did they put the dot on the T? Oh, I'm going to tell you why. They put that there. Um, I, you know, it's a grammatical rule that talks and, oh, you see this number right here? You see number one? You see where it has that little note up there? Let's get, let's let, let them answer it. So let's go down to, because when you get it, I send it to you, just look at that little note right there. There's a little note on number one. We're going to go down because the notes will be down at the bottom. It'll tell you why. They might give us the answer. They might not, depending on what they feel like, right? Because sometimes they say, we'll look at this later on. Look, I was correct. <laughs> no, we're not going to discuss at this point why the vowels change when we add the noun endings. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you the reason why they do that. The reason why they don't get into telling you about that right now is because that's not what they're talking about. They want you to focus on this noun ending only. If I was to go in and tell you about the Tav and why it's changed, that might confuse you. All I want you to know is like, as soon as I put this here, don't worry about this. That's a question to be answered later. I want you to focus on what that dot and that yo means. It means mine. I want you to see that, yeah, there's a change. There's a transformation. Yeah, the dot was added. But for me to tell you why right now would throw your brain off somewhere else. Because we need to go to example number two. Example number two, but thank you for your question. When we get to that part, then when we learn that, you'll better understand it. It's in the book. They're not going to tell us about it right now because it disturbs the, the flow, okay? So the second example that we have here is your queen. So how do you say queen? Well, if you wrote out these letters, you got the men, which is an M. You got the L, which is right here. You got the C or the cough, which will be, would be a K or, or a C. Doesn't matter. And you got the H. You got that ah right there. Say So you got Mal. And then here, Ka, okay, Malka, okay, so a Malka, so a Malka is a queen, okay, got an M, got an L, and got a K, but no H, why no H, because it's Melek, which is a king, the A on the end tells us that it's feminine, but because it has an A on an end, we got to change it, because our intention is to add a letter a noun ending, because this is what this is, it's a noun ending, okay? We have to change this ah right here. So what do we do? We change the, we take the this off and we put the tab on the end, okay? So that change was made, great. What do we do now? Well, we're gonna add this, your, and it's masculine. So we're gonna add it, yeah. So now we got mal, ka, the ka. Malkathika, okay? And that's how you would say your queen, but you're talking to a masculine person, a male. The reason why we know it's a male is because the ending, the noun ending right here, okay? The noun ending is the final cough with this mark right here, okay? Any questions? So you see that anytime you put an ending, you have to change some words that end in, because this is a rule. And, all, and it's always going to be the rule. The rule is, if I'm going to add a ending, a noun ending, more specific, a noun ending, which can be the cough, it'd be the, the wa with this, it could be the, the new, you know, it could be any of those endings that we saw. It could be the Kim. It could be the Ken. It could be any of those. Okay. So if I'm going to do that, the rule is I got to change. I got to change the, 
plurality of something or I got to change the femininity of something in order for me to add. That's the rule. That's what the rule that we're going over right now. Okay. So, Condra, tell me about what happened from this one here to this one here. It went from Banim uh -huh. to Bane uh -huh. to Banu, our. Uh -huh. Yes. So what what do we why what happened for when you put it in a semi coup form? What, what happened? happened? Yeah, what happened to the mem? You lose it. Okay. And so the reason why you're losing is because you're you you're going you're in a form. You're, this, this, you're putting your hands on it. Okay, you're changing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to change this. You have to because this is the identification mark to tell you I got to change that. Okay. If it has this on the end of it and I have to change, I'm going to put an ending on it. I got to change this to a top and I'll leave the top there. Okay. If I got the em on the end right here, right. I got that on the end of a word. I got to change this. I got to, I got to get rid of this and I got to go to the two dots in the yode, which you see right here. And because I got the two dots in the yode on it, now I can add my ending, which is new. I can add my ending. And now we got Benenu. Bene is the sons and then our sons. You see, it's not. So has it lost its, has it lost its flavor? Has it lost its meaning? No, we're adding something to it. So we're not saying Benim, Benimnu, we're saying Benenu. But if you know what Bene is, you know, that's the semi coup form. You know, this is your noun ending. You add that. And what you got? Hours right here. And then sons right here. See? And that's the rule. So rule number 10 is very, very important. But remember, if you learn the vocabulary, learning the vocabulary, as soon as you listen, as soon as you learn the vocabulary, you can add pieces and you'll know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> it's crazy. How e the language is not hard. I think the grammar is more difficult than anything else, but the language itself is not hard. So Seuss, so we don't say horse anymore. We say Seuss. And then if we got a Seuss, there, is there any ending on it? Is there a Susa? Nope. If it did have Susa, I would have to put it in. I'd have to change it. And what would I change it to? Susa. Thank you. I would get rid of this and I would put a top on the end of it. And of course, don't expect to remember your, your vowel points because you haven't got there yet. Suseth. It would be Suseth. It doesn't have any ending on it and it's by itself. Then I know there's no change. I don't have to do a semi coup. There's no change. And all we do is just add the ending. So I have Susakin. Su, su, kin. Those two dots right there is a uh sound. This with that right there is a oo sound. And, the, and this right here is an s sound. So it's su. Then we got su right here. And then we got cane, which would be either you could put a K if you want, E H N, or you could put a C, doesn't matter. Cane. Okay. Susa cane. If I wanted to say, if I say Susa Kim, what did I just say? If I put a mem right here, a final mem, what would that be? Is it their horse? Well, remember the endings are a masculine and the other is a feminine. So it would be your horse. And it's talking to a group of people, plural, but I just change it from feminine to masculine. That's masculine. And the end on here, that's feminine. You see? So the first letter here never changed. So I know that that's your. 
Now, as soon as I put an extra letter on it, it becomes plural your. Okay. If it's a if it's a cough by itself, if this was just a cough right here by itself with the two dots, it'd be susaka, a susa, a susuk, which would be for the feminine. So if you notice, I keep talking about masculine, feminine. I keep talking about singular. I keep talking about plural. I keep talking about first person, second person, third person. Once you learn these things and you're looking for those things, then everything else will be easy for you because that's what you have to know. You have to know these. Okay. And you'll learn it. Don't worry. No worries at all. Those are examples there. So you're going to get that. I'm going to make this your last page because it's a lot. 28. But I think I sent the whole lesson. <laughs> so that was talking about the first rule. Because there's a rule within rule 10. There's two rules within rule 10. See? Rules. The second rule is when we add the noun endings, because that's what we're discussing, onto the plural noun endings, it comes with the yod. It was interesting. Okay? So they're going to give us a list of all the endings, and basically they're the same endings as it was on page 26 of previous pages. But now, since you're talking about plurality, every single one of these endings, noun endings, are going to have a yod in it. That's going to precede what you did before, except for right here. And here's a note on it, which we can look at rule number one again, or note one. And note one, it will tell us some. So let's go look at note one. And I guess what the excuse is going to tell you, we're not going to discuss this. <laughs> look, he says here, the ending for my is yod and not, let me see. Okay. All right. So here, the ending for my is a yod with the ah right here. Not yod with the i here. So there is a change. So you're going to see page number 30, note number one. It's going to give you a little bit more information about that, okay? Um, what I want you to know is, is that you, you have my, that could be this way, and you have my, that could be this way. And they're going to tell you the, what it is, but we have to look at the next page or page number 30, run 28. So when we get there, we'll figure it out. Here is the endings for the plural endings. So on page number 26, which you're going to receive, you're going to get the list that you have for noun endings. They're exactly the same as these, except for a yod. And of course, some different vowel points. That's all. Because they added that, you have to change the vowel points. But in terms of the last letter that's used, it's still there. It's still the final cough. You know, and what they've done here is they dropped the dot that was over this part. So this is just another piece. So when you see this piece to the puzzle, you see the yod, you'd be like, wait a minute, I know the ending is a cough, so I know that's your, but then they got the yod. Oh, that's plurality. That's that's uh that's not singular, that's plural. So the, the noun must be a plural noun. See, so what this is, it's a game. If you know the cards that you're dealt. You can look at the cards and be like, okay, I know what this means. I know that this card right here tells me that it's a, it's a plurality, but it has to do with her. I know it's a her because I have this right here and I got that. I got the hey on the end. I know it's a his because it's got the wall right there on the end. I know it's sure because I got the final cough. I got the two dots. So I know that ain't changed. So they're still giving you the clues to what the ending is. They're just spicing it up by throwing that extra yod in there. Even with um, here, you got the yod here, and you got the new, same, king, masculine, plural, same, cane, feminine, plural, still, hang, there, okay? The last list didn't have this. The last list just had the mem and the two dots. That's all it had, and then it had the two dots and a new final noon on the last list. And that has to do because it was singular. And when I'm dealing with that, which is um, plural, I'm going to get a different piece. But I don't want you to look at all the different, hey, that these dots and these dots and these dots and 
you know, why is these dots here? And what is that dot? And all this kind of stuff. I don't want you to worry about those dots and those sounds. We're not talking about sounds. We're talking about endings. So I know new means hour, but this right here tells me that whatever is ours, something plural is ours, not something singular, something plural, okay? This has to do with plurality of the noun. I hope that makes sense. So let's look at some examples. So example number one, like we had an example on page number 26, they told us that his mother was Emma and it was an individual mother. Now that we got mothers, this word right here, emoth, how do I know that it's mothers? What two letters tell me that this is mothers? Both. They add that to the end. That's a, a feminine plural ending. That's a feminine plural ending, okay? So because it has a feminine plural ending, the rule that when it's in a semi form, because we're, remember, when you add anything to a noun, if something is already added to it, or if it's in a plurality of im or a, ah, it has to go through a semi form. If something has already had a ending on it, it has to be changed, okay? So we know that, well, we're gonna add, I'm talking about our mothers. Our is the new that you have here, that's the new. And then these, this dot and these two yo's here are the plurality of the mothers. So they're, all they're gonna do is they're gonna say, now we're gonna take this ending and we're gonna add it to emoth. And what happens? Emo the nu. That's how you would say that. Emo the nu. Emo the nu. Now let me show it to you. Here's the emoth right here. Emoth is still there. Okay. Then you got to add your piece of the puzzle. Okay. And we know that the two dots in the yo means plurality. So I, when I see that, those two dots right here in the yod, I'd be like, oh, okay, I know that's plurality, but you don't even need to know the two dots. All you need to know is that this ending is new and they added a yod to let me know that this in particular now is plural. And also what can let me know is plural is this here, oath, that's plural. Also what I can know too is that this first part of the word is em, which is a, a aleph and a mem, which means what? Mother. So break it down. Mother, mothers, plurality, ours. Say, emothenu. Em, mo, they, and then nu. Emothenu. That's how you would say our mothers, okay? So go step by step. Don't worry about the vowel points because they're not gonna explain that because we're not talking about that. They're just trying to show you how it comes together. We know that we have for queen is a malka, which we know these are queens because of the oath right here. Remember in our lesson, if you add an oath to the end, it's feminine plural. If you add an em to an end, what is it? There's a yod and a mem on the end. What is it? What does this symbol right here mean? <laughs> Masculine? Plural. So you just got to know your pieces to the puzzle. What's this piece? Is it a masculine singular? Yep. Yes, it is. It's his, it's third person. What is this piece? Do you remember? Don't worry if you don't remember. It's okay. 
I'm just challenging you because the more you know the pieces, okay, to the puzzle, it's like having a deck of cards, okay? And then you have those pieces out there, you'd be able to do those cards, right? You should be able to take the, a, a piece of a puzzle and know like, okay, I know this right here. I know that's uh, that right there. I know that's a uh, plural. And I'll, if I know my vocabulary words like Malka, I know this is an M, a L, and a K. And I know that has a feminine ending on it. So what's going on in your brain is you're making, you, and this is why this is an amazing language, is because what it does, it causes you to have to look at everything. So I, I'm so used to diagnost, you know, doing a diagnostic on it. I ch you got to chop everything down. That's what's amazing. Yeah, it's not going to allow us to learn a language without chopping it down so you can find out what it means. It's like, instead of me just saying queens, that's easy. You just look at this and you're good. I can see that as queens. But when you look at this, you got to really look at it. You got to know those three letters right there. And you got to know what that ending is. But you already know, if you study Hebrew, you'd be like M, a L, and a K again. Okay, so that's a Melech, or it could be M, a L, and a K again. And I could put the A on it. That's Mal uh, Malka. I could go a M, a A, a L, and an A, and a K. That's a Moloch. That's a messenger. That's a king. That's a messenger. That's a female. That's a queen. That's a messenger. I know within the language, the Mem represents water. So I know that means from. I know lock on the end means to walk because I've got the shepherd's staff and the cough in my hand. So I know that that means to walk. So from walking with a staff on my hand to deliver a message. Oh, okay. So a king is like a Moloch. A queen is like a Moloch. They're a messenger. They're a messenger. That's the status that they have. One to walk on behalf of someone else to give a message. And so that's what a king does. And so our king... His job is to walk on behalf of Yahweh and deliver the message to the people from Yah. So we got to break down our words and we got to look at it. And if you know what those letters are, you just got to familiarize yourself with it. And so what we want to do is add another piece to our puzzle. So when we look at this piece, we want to break the piece down. Okay. So what is the femininity or excuse me, the masculinity? Let's deal with this. How do I know this is masculine? How do I know this in particular word is masculine? Or that ending? How is that ending masculine? What letter in there tells me is masculine? The mem. The last one, the mem on the end, the final mem tells me it's masculine. Generally, all endings that with a mem on them is masculine. It's easy to remember because Masculine has to do with the first letter M. Masculine has to do with the first letter in, or M in a male. You know, or mad. <laughs> you understand? So that's the ending. So we got that. Now, how do I know that it's it's plural? How would I know that it's plural? Looking at these, this whole little giddy up here. That ending, how do I know that that ending is plural? The ending is plural. What letters in here tell me that it's plural? Is it the cough in the mem? Yes. If it was a cough by itself, it would change and give another form. And what would that form be? A final what? A final cough. Final cough. Yes, you understand. That's what it would look like, okay? It was feminine, it'd be final cough, and then two dots. And you'll learn that. So when you see this, you're like, okay, I know that right there is masculine right here. And I know it's plural because it's not one single letter on the end. It's two letters. So it tells me that it's plural. You see? Now, within this ending, we got something extra right here. So that extra right there tells me that the noun that I'm going to put the noun ending on is what? Plural. 
when Kim is by itself, it's plural for the ending. The moment you put the jod on here, it's not making the ending even more plural. What it's saying is, is that the noun that I'm representing is not a queen, it's queens. So it's already plural. But this is telling me, this letter right here is telling me, with those two dots, is telling me that the actual root word, not letter, root word, is plural. It tells me that. That is plural. See? So every single letter in your word plays a very vital part. It's a piece of a puzzle. Here's a piece. Here's another piece. Let me divide it up. Here's a piece. Right? The yo right here in this, that's a piece. Where's another piece? Here's another piece to the puzzle, the oath right here. And then the final piece is right here. See? So we got one, two, three, four pieces. Four pieces to say your queens. And it's only sounded out with, well, I think it's what? Malkothic came, Malkothic came, like four different syllables. But there's four pieces, and each one of those pieces to this word, to this puzzle, is telling you something, a distinguishing feature about that in particular word. So once you learn your to your puzzle, you'll be like, I know what that is, and I know what this is. It's not just reading and go, you know, the Malkothic him. It's me understanding when I'm looking at it. I can read it and I'll know what it is. I know a Malkoth or a Malakoth is a, a queen's. And I know this here, right? This Akim. That's how you would say it, Akim. Matholakim. I know what it is. Okay? They're just taking these two dots right here and then putting it right here and they're moving everything over together. And that's how you got it. So they're just showing you how they put words together and how they create words based upon the rules of the game. There's rules to this game. That's your ending on that, okay? I did say I was going to stop, which I am. Um, we'll come back on page 29 next week. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you. I wanted to share with you that putting endings onto nouns, there's rules, okay? And you just got to be aware of those rules. And that's it. Once you learn the rules, you're fine. Are you going to learn today? No. Are you going to learn for the next week? No. Are you going to learn them in the next month? Maybe. Depends on how often you read. So are you reading the Torah portion? And if you are reading the Torah portion, are you reading on Bible Hub? Are you reading on, you know, any other place where you can actually read it and then look at it and click on it? And then they give you the, the actual, let me show it to you before I go. They have the, um, the, what you would say. All right, so let's just look at this right quick. All right, so when you look at something in any Bible hub, you know, you push on the chapter or whatever. Over the top of each one of these words, they have what you would call transliterated. Okay, transliterated. Okay, and I'm not talking about translation. What's wrong with this pen? Okay, it's tripping. They haven't translated it up here at top. Up here, they're talking about how they they took each one of these w sounds, like Y right here, that's the Y and the Yod, and then they got Dob, that's right here, the, the dalit in the bed with the dot in it. So that means make two of them geminate and then dot bear. So when you're asking some questions like, well, why is it, what is those two? And I'm going to blow it up a little bit. Sorry for jumping around. 
Transliteration, you guys, is just taking the Hebrew letters and sounds and writing them out in English letters. That's all. Okay. That's all they're doing. That's it. That's all they're doing. So this Y right here is this part right here. It's the Wa. It's the vowel point underneath it. And it's this Yod right here. This right here says right here. They say way. It's not way. It's why. Why? I know when you and I say why, we, this is what we look. This is what we know in our brains. You're just changing this. It's not. It's, this is how you say. You say why. And what makes it why? It makes it why by this this right here. That's how you make a sound. So why is the, so? What's the what's the I? The I right here is this vowel point and this yod. That's the I. That's how you say it. But they wrote it in English, and you and I know English is a, as in say. See, so that's where the confusion comes from. If you don't know how to make these sounds, the wa right here is this first letter. Okay, the next letter, this little thing right here is that one. And the final part right here, the yod, is that's why represented. So there you go. That's why. Then you got your next one, the D. It's right here. Then you got the next one. I'm going to change the color. You said there's the ah. Where's the I? It's right here. Okay. Then you got the bet. Where's the bet at? The bet's right here. That's right here. Then you got another B. Why is it two Bs? Tell me, Condra. Because it's the, the dot in the middle? Yes. There you go. It's the dot in the middle. When you got the dot in the middle, you make two Bs, and it's called a geminate, which are twins. That's why they're making two of them. It's because it's called a geminate, and a geminate comes from the idea of Gemini, twins. Okay, this is a grammatical characteristic, a trait. Okay. And finally, the last letter is what? An R. And then here's your R. And then you go over here and here's your R. So is learning Hebrew difficult? No. All you got to know is the pieces to the puzzle. And if you know how to say it, then you understand it. So when I look at this word, then underneath that, I got and. Well, I've been doing my Hebrew, so I know that this means this. Okay. Oh, I've been doing my Hebrew. What's my word? Devar, right here. What is Devar? Spoke. Okay. So what does this yo mean? Oh, I've been doing my Hebrew. That means he. Okay. Then they got it a consecutive imperfect, which is another grammatical rule, changes the tenses on things, and I know what it is. How do I know that it's a PL? Well, I've been doing my Hebrew. I know the way that they got these vowels right here tells me that it's a PL and it's forceful. I know that. Okay. So it really should say, and he spoke. And then it's going to tell you who the he is. Who's the he? The he is the next in particular noun, which is yohe wahe. So he's the one who spoke because in Hebrew, the verb comes before. Verb is first right here. And then the noun right here. So it tells you the action and then it tells you the person who did the action. It doesn't tell you the person and then the action. There's some really rare times that you see that. They have it, but not too many times. Okay. And then when you're here, you can click on 19, uh, 19, uh, 19, 1696. You click on it. It's going to tell you the actual root of the word and what it means and how to spell it out in English. So again, we know that a three letter root, according to our Hebrew, oh, we know that a three letter root to any word is a child root. We'll talk about that later. So I'll go over here and say, okay, da bar. That's how I say it. Da bar. Why do you know how to say this? So you telling me all I got to say is the bar and that's exactly what I'm saying right here? Yes. That's what it is. So where's the D at? Oh, well, the D, that's the first letter right here. So this must be the letter, how to say D, D, same sound, okay? This is a, a bet, but it doesn't have a dot in it. So it's not going to be a hard B sound like the bar. It's going to be the 
var, soft. And here's a reason for that. And he'll tell us about that later. But we know that's a bet. And the letter B in English. I'm transliterating right now. The last final letter is this R right here. That's a resh. And it gives you the R sound. And there you go. So if I want to say it, they say da, da bar. It's not da bar. It's davar. And davar means to speak. You see? And then it tells you the part of speech. It's a verb. And that's the reason why it's in first place in this in particular sentence. So you can learn it, okay? Then if you want to find out like what it is for the, for the vowel points and you just want to sharpen up your vowel points, right? You'll say, okay, what's the first vowel point? Oh, that's that ah right there. Uh-huh. And what's the next one? Oh, that's the ah too. Well, what's the difference? Well, this one has a like a little tail on it and this one doesn't. All right, so this one's a little bit longer. Oh, that's the long one. Oh, and this is the short one. Well, what's the sound on this one? Oh, this one is ah. What about this one? Shorter is ah. So one's a little ah and one's ah. One's long, one's short. Okay. And then also, too, when you learn your Hebrew, you'd be like, okay, well, I know how to make those sounds, but what do they mean? And then you're going to find in your Hebrew, you stick a stick with it, you'd be like, oh, okay, so this is a simple action. You know, that's what that one is. That's simple. Any ah is simple. Okay. That's what it means. And then if I put another and you change the dots, what does that mean? You know, oh, that's, you know, or one dot. Oh, that's forceful. That's your next, you know, your next book. Oh, that's a forceful. So instead of me saying da bar, I'm going to say dib bar. That means that's a force one. So instead of me speaking, I'm not going to speak to you. I'm going to shout to you. I'm going to scream at you. You see? I think there's a question here. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. Oh, yes. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Sorry, Renee. Shabbat Shalom. All right. So, um, that's how you guys do that. So use Bible Hub to your advantage. And you'll get it. If you want to learn it, you come back. And you're like, oh, Y da bear, Yahweh, El Moshe. Y <laughs> da bear, Yahweh, El Moshe. See? And that's how you do it. And you say, well, what's the, what's the M? Oh, that's the M. What's the O? Oh, that's that dot right there. What's the, the sh? Oh, that's that right here. And then what's the eh right here? And it follows up. That's it. Eh, 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 el. See? You guys get it? That's how you're going to learn the language even faster. So in your Torah portion, at least try to read one verse in Hebrew. Okay. You got, you have to do it. You have to, you have to study. Anyway. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, it's very helpful. Um, let me turn you on to something before I let you go. Um, I'm going to turn you on because you're a real serious student. We'll go back and look at this again. Um, I want you to go to, I don't know if you're up on it, but they have a, um, a website called Safaria. You ever hear it? Yeah, I use it all the time. Oh, well, you're already up on it. Okay, then that's what I'm saying. You serious about yours? Did you know that? Um, did you know about the tool about what you can do? Like, for example, let's let's look at right here. Let me see. Let me see up here. Uh, text. Uh, go. I always use go to Tanakh. I just use their tools. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, here, when you go right here. One of the things that you and I can do is, where, where's the Hebrew? What happened? Anyway. Um, Click on the, the Aleph and the, there you go. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 let me see. Language, yeah, here you go. English. Mm -hmm. Okay, pull the girl, look at you trying to help. You help me out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when you first look at it, I don't know if you knew this, but you know you can click on and do that, right? Check this out. You can highlight right here like that, Barra, and there you go. Uh -huh. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, you know who showed me? Uh, Zion. Zion Lex? Yeah. 
Yeah. I saw him do it one day. I was like, uh oh. Uh oh, you found another tool. That's, hey, you know what's funny? That's who I learned it from. Yes. It's, yeah. It's, it's so it's, neat. It's so neat. It's cool, right? Right. So, um, my last couple of weeks, like my last two weeks, I've been doing over here and I love it. But well, guess what's also deep about it? Let me show you something that I found out about it. Um, say you got one word, like you got better shift, right? Check it out. So if I just go right here and I go borrow right here, it got created in there, right? I just highlighted part of the word. Look what happens when you do shift. It gives you the word. So what it is, is words are compounded, okay? Right? They're compounded. So Badreshith, they would say, oh, in the beginning, you know, in the bet, and then Rosh Rosheth is in the beginning. But every word that you can take, you could take any word that you have right here and find other words within the word. Like, for example, my yim right here. Watch my yim. Go take my yim. It'll tell you that it's water, right? Mm -hmm. But the name of the word is Hashamayim. I'll just take the, the sham. It'll tell me to listen and obey. Oh, wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So what happens is, and this I'm, we're on this, because now what happens is it deepens your study to like, when you look at a word, you're not looking at it like one, one way. Now, when I look at better shift, I'm looking at every word that's in it. Bara is in there. Bara is in better shift. Also, the name of Adam's son, Sheth, is in there. It means wow. to set and put in place. And then you got the Rosh right here. Wow. You see? So there's, there's three to four words inside of a word. In one word. In one word that tells you more about the substance of what's being said. Uh -uh -uh. You see? And so you can look at it and see if it works. If it works, it works. You know, like raw right here is not a word, so it doesn't work. But mm -hmm. if you look at just bar, boom, there it is. So like option. It, you see? Hmm. So badra, you know, and it has a bar has the idea to do with grain and stuff like that, but bar. Bar has to do with, I think it's, a, um, Ara, I don't know if it's Ara, um, Aramaic. Um, they, I think they say bar in that one. But you just do your research on it and it'll tell you, look, there it is. It's a well, it's a pit, it's a sun, it's an air, it's pure, pure. pure and also there it is. I told you, grain. Oh, okay. You see? And so this will help the studies out as well. Because the longer, when you look at words, you'd be like, wait a minute, but what is this? What is this? What is this? Can you see? And then if you just wanted to by itself, just pick a letter and it'll give you that letter and tell you where it's at and it'll tell you what, uh, what let, you know, this is a really great website. It tells you it's the 16th letter and has to do with the I. See, it's all there. Wow. You know? Huh. That's an amazing. So I I like them better than I like um I don't wow. like, I don't like Kabat. I don't like them. The Safarias, the ones who are the Sephardic Jews, they're not the Ashkenazis, they're the Sephardics, they're the Spanish Jews. Oh, okay. And so they they say things that are different, they're not German, right? So generally, when people are translating things, they put it in their, their culture and how they understand it, right? But I'm telling you, this is better than Bible Hub, but it's only for a person who knows the language. If you don't know the language, you can't really, you could, if you want to learn a language, go to this site. Go to, go to Bible Hub just to learn how to, you know, transliterate. You right, know, right. And put the pieces together and how to sound it out, you know? But when you want to learn more about what each one of these words mean, it gives you a deeper understanding, man. Yeah, I like this. I, I didn't know it did all this. but Yeah. Yeah, it does. You see? So um, that's what I've been doing lately. I've been like, and I, when I found out, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy how, how awesome this is. Because there's words within a word that you got to, and you find it, you get more understanding. You get a lot more understanding, you know, like this word right here, mob deal. Well, deal right there, it says dilka, um, to contract, 
water, a waiter, a steward, you know? And then here's this idea of Mavil from between when Yasarab expanded and separated. Separation, see? Havdil, Badal. Badal means to separate. So where would that be? That would be right here, mm -hmm. right here. See? And then they give you this information. Why, why separate? Because it's talking about dealing with metals and how you separate the tin and the alloy and all the dross. When Yah told, he said, I'm going to put you in the, in the, in the, um, in the fire and I'm going to get the dross off of you. Right, right. Said, I'm, so now we got a deeper understanding. Well, I'm not just separating you. I'm letting you know what, how I'm going to do it. Just as the dross is being separated off of something that, you know, these, these other metals, these alloys that are not precious to me. Hmm. See? So one of the reasons why I need to separate you and, only, and listen what I'm about to tell you. The only way I can do that is through fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fire. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. You see? So right now, yes, and I'm not trying to just put a lot of, you know, metaphors on it, but it's the truth. Like Yah says, that the commandment is the lamp and the Torah is the fire, okay? So what? how is he going to separate us? He's going to separate us through fire. That's how he's going to consecrate himself is through fire. That's how he always does it. Right. You see? So we, we, we could be looking forward to the fire. God's going to make a separation. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, fire. And that's how it is. So then guess what happens? Your vocabulary starts increasing, your understanding starts increasing, and you just be off the chain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And your understanding, you'd be like, well, I know what it is. Well, look at that. Verse yes. 10, Waikra Elohim. Well, we know we're in the book of Waikra, but he says, and he said, and he's and he called out Elohim to La Yabasha, the Ha'adres in the Ul Mikwe. Now, no, we're not in, in Waikra, we're in Genesis right now. The address in the move week way, the Hamamim, the Kadr, the Yamim, the Wayar Elohim, the Kitov. He saw that it was good. See? So that's what it is. Oh, I like this. Yeah. I know this word right here, Kiwe, means to wait. Yes, I was correct. You can play a little game with yourself. It's wait. Kiwe means to wait. To wait. Yeah, so in a hope and an expectancy. But in context, when he says he said Ula Mikwe, it says that he gathered up the waters, right? Mm -hmm. That he gathered, he says then Elohim called to the dry and he and he was gathering the waters. But when inside of the word for gathering the waters, for gathering, there's this word called um <laughs> Kiwe, right here, watching. Laying and wait for, collecting, binding together. So when Yah talks about he gathers the waters, this is very beautiful. They use it for binding. And usually when someone would wait for something, look for something uh, eagerly after they did agriculture, they would bind stuff up and they would tie it together and make it stand up and he would then go gather it. Okay. So what Yah did was he gathered the waters up into to the place, all into the seas. That's what he did. He took all the waters. And he gathered them like you're gathering grains of stock and binding them up. Mm -hmm. So if it lets you know that he's the way that he did it was gathering it and binding it and he had to bind it with his words. And that's why they can only go to a certain distance or he knows they know where to stop. Do you know if he bind, he bound it to, to gather it together by collecting it and binding it and waiting for it? Mm -hmm. Do you know that all he has to do is unbind it? And flood everything. And that's it. That's so it. He's showing you how much power he has. Wow. Where he can take water and call it all up like it's a big stack of grain. And he can tie it up and say, you stay right here until mm -hmm. I bring you where I want to put you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. Isn't it? So it's a, that's why he's called Elohim. Okay. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah, so it's all it's all in there you know circle look even even if you look at you can we continue to look at the actual word right here 
it has this idea of what? A line. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a line. 